Hey everyone, I'm Titch Pine and welcome to Octopticom. What is Octopticom, you ask? I like to call it a light-based engineering puzzle game. It's gonna release on October the 3rd and this is what it looks like. So it's a puzzle game about light and in every level you have one white light source, which is uh, this thing down here. And um, you're supposed to write different colors um, of light uh, to the outputs. So how does this work? If I start a simulation here, uh, we get a white beam down here because um, this is a white light source, so it creates a white beam. Okay, and we can now start, uh, well, we can now use different components. We have mirrors and filters and some other stuff I will we'll show you later. But let's start with filters because they're pretty obvious what they do. So we have a red filter, for example, and a red filter will filter the, red, the, the light beam and it will continue only the red channel or will only let the red part of the light pass. And um, as you can see, that makes uh, the beam red. If I put now a blue filter behind that, well, I filter everything and nothing goes through. That makes sense. Okay, so we also have um, a cyan filter and magenta and yellow filter, which let two colors through. So we can, for example, go uh, with the cyan filter, which makes the beam cyan. And uh, then we can put a green filter after that, and it will still let the green part or the green channel of the, of the beam go through. Um, it's because that is letting two channels through. That makes sense. Okay, so I hope that makes sense anyway. Uh, let's go to, to mirrors or let's first talk about the input because the input is important. So input, you have usually one or multiple inputs, one or more inputs, and um, they are act as a filter as well, but it's a dynamic filter or a time-based filter, I guess. So if you put the input here, you will see it will filter the light in a beam um, and it will filter it based on the input down here. So there's a cursor basically going through and the input will filter on whatever the input's color is. So white will not filter at all, magenta will filter it from, to magenta and stuff like that. Um, so pretty straightforward. Okay, now we have mirrors. Mirrors obviously, well, reflect beams, right? Okay. Um, then we also have uh, beam splitters, which uh, will split the beam which is very useful because we need, well, that you need those in basically every level. They're pretty important. And the others are not that important. Actually, you never use those two. They are supposed to block beams. I never, I never need, like it, I didn't need them so far at all. Like I didn't use them in any level. Um, I think I used their double-sided mirror once. Uh, basically, it allows you to reflect from both directions, uh, but it's very situational as well. Anyway, let's try to talk, let's talk about this level. Um, so in this level, you're supposed to split the, the input uh, into three separate outputs, um, into three separate color channels. So all the red from the input should go into the first output, all the green to the second, and all the blue to the third. So we have to first split the input, and we use beam, spl beam splitters for that. And now we have three um, beams colored by or filtered by the input, which is which is a good start. And now we have to filter those with um, by by color basically. And um, now we get. Uh, this and this is exactly what we need. We just have to line up the outputs as well and uh, Now the, uh, the first output will write all the red parts of the input the second all the green parts and the third all the blue parts And that's a very basic level as uh, level four. It's one of the first ones and uh, the game gets a little bit more complicated But let's see what happens when you actually beat the level so we speed this up a little bit um, And we get a component cost because every component costs money and uh, we get an area score and in most levels you get an optimization channel challenge, which is usually a pretty low area score. It's not necessarily the, the, the optimal area score. I underbeat it multiple times already. Um, but in this case, uh, in, in this case, I think it's optimal, but it's usually uh, a good a good challenge uh, to get there. So that's interesting. Um, I don't think there are any challenges for optimization uh, for component costs, unfortunately, which would be interesting as well in some levels at least. Um, but yeah, you get two scores and you can try to optimize this. For example, a very op easy optimization would be doing this. And I think I just get optimum if, uh, optimal if we just move things around a little bit. Uh, no, that's probably, is that optimum? Uh, no, I think it's not. No, it's not. Okay, you can go smaller than that. But that, that would be the obvious optimization here, obviously. Okay, let's go to a later level. Uh, and show you a few more components because there are more components than um, the basic ones. So besides the filters and the mirrors, you also get colored mirrors and those will um, basically extract one or two colors from your beam and reflect those to a different direction and um, will let the rest go through. So in this level, I use those, wait, that's way too fast. Um, in this level, um, I use those and you can see 
uh, when there's a white beam here, it will like, get let the red uh, will extract the red and reflect it back there, and the green and the blue part, so cyan, will go through, and those will be extracted here by these other colored mirrors. So that's how these work. They were they're really useful in a lot of levels, actually, um, especially for optimization, um, because they basically do two things at once, right? They split the beam, and um, they they will split the beam or redirect it or both, actually. But they do th three things: they split the beam, they redirect the beam, and they extract it or filter the color. So that's pretty useful. Um, and uh, then there are also switches. Those are really important as well. So a switch, um, basically, uh, the description is pretty good. Let's read that. Let's beam pass if there is a beam at its base. So we have um, two in and outputs to the left and the right of the switch, and we have a base down there. And uh, the in and output, um, you can go both directions, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, but it will only let something like if a beam comes in from the left. It will only go through to the right when there's a beam at the base, and the other way as well. So when it comes from the right, it only goes through, goes out through the left when there is beam, there, there's a beam at the base. So that's basically a little, um, yeah, it's a switch. It's an, it's kind of an end switch, not really, but it's giving the, it's a similar idea, I guess. And there's something like kind of a not switch, which is the other one that's beam positive. There's no beam at its base, and you can build a lot of logic thingies with that, obviously. Um, so yeah, you can do things to make or you can do complex well not algorithms But well kind of I guess there's algorithms in, in a way um, no, not really. It's more functions. I guess I don't know whatever you can build complex logical thingies with it um, But it gets even more crazy when you add the accumulator the accumulator saves a value um, Accumulates color for one cycle and then release it on the next one. So it basically it saves Whatever you put in for one cycle, delays it, or delays it by one cycle, and then let it out on the other side. And that can be used for a lot of things. Um, in this level, for example, you're supposed to um, take every second value of the input, copy it to the output, and then on the slot for on the next slot, you put a color based on the first one. So if the first one is green, the second one should be blue. And if the if the first one is red, the second one no wait, uh, I think oh yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the first one is green, yeah, it's, it's this order. So if the first one is green, then the first one should be green, and the second one should be blue. If the first one is blue, the first one should be blue, and the second one should be red, and, st and, and so on. And that's what this does, so uh, don't look at it too much or you get spoiled to solution, which is unfortunate. But <laughs> I, it's one of the later levels. You probably forget it, uh, forgot about it uh, when you get there. Um, but that's how that works. There's also um, the complementary, which I actually never used so far. I think it's there might be uses for it, though. Um, I'm pretty sure. Um, it basically flips the color around. Unfortunately, it doesn't doesn't create a white beam when there is no input beam. Like it doesn't do anything if there is no input beam. It, it flips all the other colors around, but it doesn't make black to white. Unfortunately, it would be way more useful if it would, would if it would do that. But well, uh, <laughs> it's still useful in some situations, I guess. But uh, but um, yeah, those are the components, and you can build pretty crazy stuff with it. So. As you can see here, there are a bunch of levels. That's that's all the content of the game. That's 42 levels. Um, they're pretty challenging for the most part. Um, optimizing for them is fairly interesting as well in most cases. Uh, they're a little hit and miss, especially the difficulty curve is a little weird. Like there are really, really crazy difficulty spikes in here from uh, in some levels, which is a little unfortunate. And they, they don't they don't feel very logical. Like the order doesn't feel logical either. So in one level, it explains um, how the accumulator works and then you don't use it for the next five levels or so, which is a little strange. Um, so it introduces a new mechanic and then doesn't use it for the next few levels. That's just weird. And there's there's multiple small things like that. Um, also, the UI is or the U, yeah the controls are weird as well. Like they are super unintuitive. They work for the most part. They're like okay. First of all, I would like to have hotkeys for those things. They are not, um, which is very unfortunate. Hotkeys for the components would be really really useful. Um, the controls, the rest of the controls work for the most part, but they're really intuitive. So to to move something, okay, you click it, you put it somewhere else, or you just drag it, whatever. That works. Uh, deleting it um, doesn't work with uh, with uh, delete or something or backspace or escape or whatever. Escape leaves the level. Um, oh, actually, okay, you can delete this. Why? I don't think that's intended. <laughs> but you can grab the item and the, or the component and then leave the level. Yeah, I guess that that deletes it. That's not the point though. What I was <laughs> the the way to delete an item is to right click it. Um, that's a little unintuitive as well. Um, it gets gets more crazy if you're trying to uh, to copy something because you cannot go Control Z or something like that. <clears throat> Instead, you have to um, Shift click it, and that will create a copy. 
Um, that's not terrible, but it's okay. that's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. It gets worse if you try to copy multiple things. So you can select multiple things by holding control and dragging or just clicking on things. That works as well while holding control. Um, and now you could move them around. So that works as well. What you can't do is uh, select multiple things. Oops. And now shift click them doesn't work. So, so you can't copy them this way. You can copy them, but you have to do it a little different. So what you have to do is you have to pick it up and now hold shift and click. And that's, I don't know why this works different than in, in comparison to just having a single component, because here I can just shift click. I, I don't know. It's it's a little weird. That should just be a thing. I think that's actually a missing feature here. That should, should just allow me to shift click this, but it doesn't for some reason. You can also co uh, rotate them um, with the Unfortunately, not with the R button, but with the Q button. Um, that's also unintuitive. The R button is starting the simulation R for run. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm finding myself pressing R all the time for rotating the things. Um, yeah, so that's, as I said, the controls are a little weird. They work for the most part if you get used to, when you get used to them, but yeah, they're not intuitive. Um, speaking about intuitivity, um, this is not intuitive either. Uh, this is how fast simulation runs, but it's not the speed. Um, it's the amount of time the light will be on for each cycle. So, or the amount of time each cycle will take. So the higher this is, the slower the simulation goes. So this means 50 milliseconds per cycle. Um, and if you put this down to one, it goes really fast, as you can see here, or you can go slower by putting it up to 90, or it's actually not milliseconds, I think. I'm not sure what this is. No, that's not milliseconds, it's probably I assume that's 900 milliseconds, something around those lines. Um, so yeah, that's, that works, but intuitive again. It would also be nice to just have like, it's clicking through this is tedious. If you want to go to, I just need buttons for max speed and, and, and min speed. And also step by step would be really, really useful. Um, not even asking for reverse step, but just step by step would be really really good just pause the simulation you can only stop it um you can stop it that works but you can't you cannot pause it uh, so that's really uh, i don't know that's just a few the controls are not great in this game um you can zoom that works uh, you can drag around you can't move the control uh, you can't move the camera with wsd even though wsd are not used for anything else so that's a shame as well. Uh, you can undo and redo, so that's very good. Um, yeah, there are even hotkeys for that. And it's regular hotkeys. It's Control z and Control y So, okay, <laughs> we got an intuitive controls here, so <laughs> that's good. Um, but besides that, it's a little strange. Um, so, um, yeah, yeah, but the puzzles are good. So that's that's a plus. That's a plus. It's a big plus, actually. It's the most important thing. The puzzles are actually fun to do. Um, this is, again, unintuitive. Uh, <laughs> there are three separate, th three categories or three difficulty levels of levels. The first 16, then the next 16, and then the last, uh, what's that, 11 or something? 9, 11, whatever. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I guess. Okay, um, and they're, <laughs> they're color-coded. And they switch color when you beat the level. And that means you could potentially have like six different colors on the screen with no idea what they actually mean. <laughs> so um, the first one started at, I think, uh, blue, if I'm not mistaken. Might have started to see on, I'm not sure. They start in one color and when you beat them, they get yellow. The second start in green and when you beat them, they get magenta. And the, the last one start in red and become whatever uh, when you beat them and it always unlocks the next two levels so you can always skip at least one level you can see i did that here just to progress a little faster before making this video um so you can always skip one level if you really get stuck um so that's that's okay that works well i think um then the options menu is is crazy so first of all this is not options, this is controls. Okay, it's good to have them. It would be nice to be able to rebind them, which you can't, unfortunately. Um, oh, I didn't know you can rotate with the scroll wheel. That's good to know. I, I missed that, apparently. Okay, um, so yeah, you have hotkeys here, not rebindable. You have separate sound, not sliders, but buttons, which is not as great as sliders, but they do the trick. Um, then you have a full screen button. This is, this one is, <laughs> okay, if it's activated, it's full screen. No question asked. Um, just to your native resolution. Um, if if it's if you disable it, it goes to a borderless window mode, which is including your taskbar though. So it's borderless window, but not the full 
window <laughs> or not a full monitor uh, which is a little weird um, but okay it would be nice to have just a regular window as well window mode as well and would be nice to have the bottles window mode to be full screen but whatever um, that's okay then you have these two buttons um, it's good that you have those options so the first option is continue simulation after error basically this means if you disable it the simulation will halt as soon as it hits an error that's useful to find your first error but it's annoying when you're trying things out. Like sometimes you just try to build a, a thing. Like for example, you want a rotating uh, a beam that goes uh, um, like uh, an alternate, alternate, alternating beam, like on off, on off, on off, because you need that to for the level. But you don't want to build a full level before you test it. You just want this little piece to work, and it, it would stop on the first step if this would be off. So it's good to have this option. But it would be nice to be able to uh, turn this on and off. In the get in the level, or just give me step by step controls that would work as well. Then this would not be even necessary to have. Um, and then there's clear beams after simulation run. That's also that would also be nice to just be off by default. So basically, this means if you have it off, then the beams will stay on the screen even if you stop the simulation. Like the last activated beam will be on the on the screen. This is useful for um, for inspecting it but also irritating while building. So it would be good to have this off by default and then just give me a button to erase the beams on the screen. That would be that would be way more convenient. Again, the controls are a mess for the most part. Um, the game lacks quality of life features left and right. It doesn't have multiple save slots for your levels. It has three profiles, but those are completely separate game profiles, even with separate option menus, I think. Um, and yeah, but you don't have you don't have a way to sell, save multiple solutions to one level. You don't see your score from here you have no idea what those levels are from here anyway you just see the number which is unfortunate as well um you have to actually click into it um so yeah it's seeing the score here would be great as well or uh, yeah and and having as i said multiple solutions um something like in tech games so you can co compare your scores to a histogram or to your friends that would be cool as well or leaderboards in general um but i guess that's like that's an extra feature like that would be nice to have but just show me my scores, that, that is easy to implement <laughs> and would be very good, I think. Um, so yeah, the game is lacking quality of life features left and right, like literally everywhere. It's not not a high, high quality product game, but, but the mechanics are actually good and the levels are interesting for the most part and fun to do. So I still recommend the game. It's a little rough around the edges, but if you're into this kind of puzzles, so for example, if you're into tech-like puzzles, because it's it's not it's not really a tech-like game, but it is heavily inspired by it. The developer even uh, admitted uh, uh, admitted so, um, and it's reasonably in the same like it's just in the same genre. It's one of the very few games that's actually in the same genre as tech-like games. Um, well, not tech-like games, but Tektronix games. It's, it's the same genre. It's, it's an engineering puzzle game. And it's it's a good one. It's not a genius one. It's not super brilliant, but it's pretty good. It's fun to do. Um, so, yeah, even with all the flaws, I still heavily recommend the game. It's called Octopticom, as you can see on the screen right now. Uh, it's releasing on October 3rd. Links in this, a link is in the description below. I'm Teach Pine. Thanks a lot for watching. Have fun and see you next time.